Hello and welcome to the first video in this series on PHP website security and hacking prevention. So the idea of this series is to teach you the techniques of how you can go about securing your PHP website. So this is going to be like an overview of some of the ways that hackers uh, can intercept your website and try to take control or take advantage of your website. So this is a list of some of the items we're going to be going over. So for example, we're going to look at the principle of list privilege, why you should only give privilege to specific users on a need to know basis. And then we'll look at passwords and encryption. So how to encrypt passwords and uh, how to deal with uh, forgot passwords and the like. And then we'll look at why data hiding isn't such a good idea, uh, isn't really a security measure. And we'll look at security through obscurity, how you can give as little information as possible to you possible hackers on your website. And then we'll look at uh, how the feature that you think is helping uh, to secure a website could actually be an attack. This is the account locking attack uh, where somebody is locked out of their own account. And then we'll look at brute, brute force attacks, sorry, how somebody can just keep trying uh, passwords and the like until they figure out uh, which one it really is. And then we'll look at how modified requests can mess with your website the error reporting system, how seriously you should take that. And then there's also things like forced browsing, path traversal, where people uh, can just try to go through your system and see what paths, what folders uh, are viable and so on until they find a weak point there. And then we can see uh, how saving that data inside a, for example, uh, because this is very common. People can save data inside uh, text documents and then they use uh, data parameter delimi delimiters. For example, uh, you can have some data like here data and then you put a full colon there and then you have the value. So this could be something like a key value pair or it could be something like key value and how this system can be taken advantage of. And then we're going to look at SQL injection, of course, everyone's favorite. And at the same time, we'll look at PHP injection as well, where somebody can put in their own PHP code into your system. And then we'll look at cross-site cross scripting attacks, also known as XSS attacks and session hijacking where somebody takes over your, se your session or they fix a session specific to you. And then we'll look at how hackers can fish for data so they can get your details that way without having to struggle with your website directly. And then finally, we'll have to look at general principles of security. The, uh, the measures you have to put in place or to keep in mind when creating your website so that uh, you limit the amount of uh, possible uh, security risks, right? So if anything from this whole series, what I want you to take away is that don't trust user supplied data because most of these can be solved if only you know this principle by heart, you keep it uh, with you as you are programming because you can't really trust user data. Sometimes you may not know what consists, what may be uh, classified as user data. So we're going to go through all that so that even the things you didn't suspect as user supplied data can be user supplied data. However, the bottom line you have to remember is there's no such thing as absolute security. There's no way you can secure your website to a point where no hacker can get to it. That is just impossible. So what we are simply trying to do here is to make you aware of the security flaws that exist 
in a PHP website, in websites in general, and then you can see how well or how much of those measures you want to implement depending on how serious uh, your website and its data are. Okay, so hopefully uh, you, you'll be with me in the next video and I'll see you then.